ChatGPT has taken the internet by storm. Today in this video, we're gonna take a look at Markdown format and what that has to do with ChatGPT. As I've played with this amazing and life-changing tool, I've learned that the more structure I give ChatGPT on the front end, the better the results and the better output I get on the back end. So let's dive in and take a look at what Markdown can do for you to improve how you use ChatGPT. Thank you for watching this video. We're gonna start with this question, what is Markdown? What does it have to do with ChatGPT? And why is it the secret sauce to getting structured ChatGPT output? The first thing that you should know about Markdown is that it is a lightweight markup language. So it's similar to HTML, CSS, that kind of thing. It can add format to text output that you're getting. And what's interesting is that ChatGPT uses Markdown format. So for me, when I saw people using things like, and put this in a markdown table, and then ChatGPT would spit out a table. Uh, I personally did not know what markdown was, so I Googled, hey, what, what's mark, what is a markdown table? And that led me to this resource at markdownguide.org. Markdown functions similar to HTML. Uh, it's easy to learn, especially if you have any experience with things like uh, CSS or HTML. It's, it's very simple to learn. Or even if you've just used a word processor, it's kind of intuitive. It makes it uh, possible to enhance how you use ChatGPT and how you use artificial intelligence. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, it can use it in its output, but it can also understand when you're putting uh, Markdown into your format and as you input, and this allows you to improve the human visibility and readability of the prompts that you use. In a video that I've already posted about how you can use ChatGPT to generate a Dungeons and Dragons adventure, some of those examples use Markdown format and request Markdown format from ChatGPT and you can get some astonishingly organized results that make it all the more usable. What are some examples of Markdown elements that you can use? We've got some here on this slide. So the headings, you know, one hashtag or number sign is your H1, your heading one, two is heading two, three is heading three. It's very simple. Uh, bold is when there's two asterisks, asterisks, I have trouble with that word, on either side of a set of words, and then the italic is gonna be one asterisk. Um, lists, if you're familiar with CSS, you're familiar with unordered lists and ordered lists. An unordered list is one with bullets and an ordered list is one with numbers. And so ChatGPT is gonna understand that kind of input too. If you say, I want an ordered list, it's gonna number it. If you just say, I want a list, it might number it, it might bold it, or it might bullet it. And so I've found that I prefer to be able to get consistent formatting out of ChatGPT and so just by learning something simple like I want an ordered list versus an unordered list helps me get better results. And then finally, you can get tables and more and we might actually, uh, and later in this video, look at the Markdown Guide website. All right, for me, when I'm trying to design a complex prompt, it's a good idea for me to set it up in a separate document. So I just open up Microsoft Word, you can use any kind of text editor, you wanna plan out the markdown structure of the output you want when you're using ChatGPT, and this is gonna help ChatGPT understand your prompt better and give you better results. Finally, what I'd like to do is we're gonna jump into ChatGPT here in a minute, and I'm going to have it help me with some legal research. I'm gonna give it some, some very basic uh, input and, and some output. I have recently been testing this out with a, a response to a motion to dismiss. I'm not gonna use one from an existing client, but maybe we'll look at some publicly available data. Or maybe I, today I might just give a, an example for our use case today and have it list out those cases in an ordered list and then write me a, a section of a brief in CRAC format, which if you're familiar with law as an industry and legal writing, you know stands for conclusion, rule, application, conclusion. Legal writing is supposed to progress logically, and so presumably ChatGPT should write excessively well in terms of organizing a logical, rational, reasonable argument. So we'll take a look at that here in a bit. All right, we're gonna jump in to ChatGPT here in a moment, but first I wanted to show you markdownguide.org, which provides some interesting information about how you can use different markdown syntax to structure your input and output as you use ChatGPT. So you can see that they have the opportunity for you to provide links, 
do tables, footnotes even. And so it's just very interesting to see how you could use this emojis, right? So it's, it's fun to think about all the different ways that you might be able to format output in chat GPT. I'm going to use GPT form the, the GPT four model for this example. And I want to put in this prompt and go through it with you. Now I have provided this prompt in a, in a word document. So I'm copying and pasting and I plan this out. I've not done this before, right? So this video could go very poorly. However, I want to show you even, even this, will probably generate something more structured than you're used to seeing, and we'll see how ChatGPT responds. I'm gonna go through each line of the prompt and explain to you uh, how it functions. So first, you're an expert constitutional lawyer. A lot of times by telling ChatGPT how you want it to act or who you want it to be, helps it get better output. So for example, if you just tell it, write me a legal analysis, it might write that as a one a law student, like in their first year. <laughs> but if you tell it to write as an expert constitutional lawyer, you're going to get better output. Other examples that I've done is I once asked it to write a narrative in the style of J.K. Rowling versus Rick Riordan, and the stylistic differences were astounding, right? And so you can do the same thing when you are working on something like a legal brief or frankly, any other task that you're, that you're working on. Okay. The next thing I ask it is to give me an ordered list of five to 10 prominent cases holding that detaining a person in prison without legal justification is a violation of the Fourth Amendment right to due process. It should be a pretty simplistic task for it to get to. Um, obviously, this is a violation of your rights, but it's nice to have cases to support that contention. And sometimes, particularly as a lawyer, you realize that some things that most of the populace says, well, duh, of course, uh, you still have to prove that. So. <laughs> um, I ask it to cite the cases in blue book citation format and then include a parenthetical. So I'm telling it to provide an explanation after that citation about what the case is about. Then I tell it finally, write a CRAC section of a legal brief on the specific issue. That's kind of a legal industry specific jargon, that CRAC. It stands for conclusion, rule, application, conclusion. It is a form of legal writing that progresses very logically. Um, you might also see IRACs, which stands for issue, rule, application, conclusion. Um, I bet that ChatGPT could do just fine with either format, but then I tell it at the end of each sentence, cite relevant law in blue book format to support your conclusions. We'll see how it does. I've seen better results with GPT-4 versus 3.5 and training ChatGPT to correctly cite law in blue book format has been a little challenging, but most of the time we can get it to work. Then I finally ask it, provide your output in the following format. And I, I intentionally use two different heading styles here because I want you to see that it is responding to the prompt in exactly the precise way that we're asking it to. So it's gonna spit out this prominent case list in a heading one, which should make it larger than when it spits out CRAC analysis. And then it should provide the ordered list of cases and then provide conclusion rule application conclusion in bold, just like we've told it to. So let's see how it does with this issue. All right, so we can see that it already gave us the heading one and GPT-4, I tend to use 3.5 for these examples because it goes so much faster, but we're gonna see what we get with GPT-4 here. As you can see, it's already started to cite cases and it's giving us these parentheticals holding that evidence obtained in violation of the Fourth Amendment cannot be used in state criminal prosecutions. So it's not quite as specific as we want and a lot of times follow-up prompts can help it get to where you need it to be. But let's continue to see what else we have. Establishing that police may stop and frisk an individual, holding that detaining an individual's luggage for a drug sniff test without probable cause is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. So it's in the right ballpark. And again, as a lawyer, and particularly if you're a constitutional law expert, you kind of know if this is getting to where you want it to be or not. Um, frequently, because we practice in the Fourth Circuit, we will then send a follow-up, or if I remember in advance, to ask it to look up <laughs> four circuit cases, it tends to give me more accurate output that way. And so don't forget that you can, the more specificity you give it, the more specificity you get in your result. But even now, right, it has begun to write conclusion, rule, application, conclusion, and it's providing citations more or less in blue book format. And it's actually citing the cases that it pulled as prominent cases, which is equally impressive. Now, is this the end all and be all today? No, do I think that you could craft a prompt that could 
help you write a brief in record time? Yes. Uh, if you asked a first year associate at your law firm to do this task for you, how long would it take them? Longer than we've been talking, which is pretty wild when you consider uh, what is happening right here, right now. Now, of course, could we then look at this case? Could we look at the issues that it's talking about? Yes, but I think all in all, if you consider what's, what's just happened and the fact that it has taken zero time flat for it to, to figure this out is, is truly amazing. And you could, um, I don't know about this output, I'd have to look at it a little closer, but we've done tests like this and you could literally in some circumstances copy and paste what it writes and put it into a brief. And I don't think anyone would be the wiser. So it has been really neat to see how you can use, uh, excuse me, use ChatGPT to get amazing output. Now, finally, one thing that I do want to point out is that the structure that we gave the prompt worked like magic, okay? We've got our heading one, we've got our heading two, we've got an ordered list, and we've got bold. And so if you've never seen output structured quite like that, know that if you go to use Markdown and you learn how to use it, that you can have easily visible, easily understandable to the human eye content coming at you back out of ChatGPT. Thank you for watching this video about how you can use Markdown with ChatGPT to get improved output from this amazing software. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've enjoyed this tip and that you can begin to see how you can give ChatGPT structured input to get structured output and that you can really get down to details on what you want it to do and how you want it to work for you. If you like this video, like and subscribe. We are a law firm uh, here in Richmond, Virginia. We provide services in the areas of immigration, personal injury, and business and intellectual property. We've been fascinated by the power of ChatGPT and how it can help us in our law practice, and we're sharing some of those tips here online. We'd love to talk to you or see your comments here on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our channel, and we'd like to see you around. Thank you again for watching. Have a great one.